So, you know my first name. <laughs> um, I discovered I was donor conceived relatively recently in 2009 under fairly acrimonious circumstances, I could say. But for me, I think it was a real relief to find out some of the reasons why I was such a vagabond. I don't think I was ever the, for want of a better phrase, black sheep of the family, but I think it was just something that really made sense, I suppose. Um, I have a sibling who reacted very differently and what I say will be curtailed because of that and her uh, desires for nothing to come out. Hopefully, if you do know me personally, then tell me afterwards. <laughs> um, not that I'm concerned about that, and I suppose my concern is that you are fully aware of the implications because the gametes grow up, and you know some of us are pretty tall um, in the end. And um, as I say, for me, it was it was my wife was a really good detective, and. This is the thing, you can never really keep a secret forever. At some stage it comes out, whether it's um, you know, someone that isn't from the family and doesn't know all the, well, can see through a lot of the other facades that come up. And I suppose it began with her making casual jest at me and how I didn't really look like anyone from my family and at gatherings and, you know, your dad's not your dad, Ross, come on, you know, and I was sort of, all right, all right, and you know, after a while it got a bit annoying, but she was actually really shocked when she found out it really was the case, even though she's very instinctual and, and she knew. Um, so it, it does come out, and I suppose that's the key issue, is that, um, that you have control over that, and I really think that younger is better. I suppose I don't have that option. Uh, I was, yeah, 30 early 30s when I found out um, and the contact that I've had with donor conceived people in in the three years that I've known the overwhelming majority of us found out under unpleasant circumstances and it's usually when a divorce or a death happens and that was the case with my family um, you know my father my social dad passed away he'll always be my dad I don't know who my biological father is as yet but uh, I'm a pretty good detective myself and I'll find out one way or the other I think um, but, uh, so if you have the chance to present that information in a, in a way at a time, I mean, it's always going to be hard, isn't it? I can see. It is. It was hard for my mother. Um, but there was a time where she decided that it was, that it was time. Um, and as I say, I, react, I was relieved that she'd gotten this secret off her chest because it's a huge thing to keep, even from your best friends and, um, your whole life. And... I'm thrilled that she did, but m yeah, my, my sibling reacted very differently and it was a very negative experience. Uh, so I suppose um, you know, secrecy can be, can be damaging and, and I think the more open you are, the better. I think it would have changed a fair bit. I mean, you know, I understand why, why my parents did that and I understand their fears, but I think they were unfounded. And, like some of the examples of Asante's research and the little quotes we get from there that, that mostly people are happy. Um, and we are grateful for being alive. I wouldn't be here without medical um, intervention as much as my default setting is that I don't like the idea of it. But, you know, I'm here by virtue of that. And I suppose um, it's part of the world we live in. And in many ways, that's, that's a great thing for a lot of people, as long as it's not abuse. And I suppose where do I come from is such a fundamental question. And, and I think that um, for everyone, they have that right to know that should at least be equal with um, the desire to have children or your particular desire to have children as a couple. So be aware of that from someone on the other end of it. And, um, and very interesting that a lot of the DI um, and uh, parents and egg donor parents turn out to be just as wonderful and I'm sure flawed as well as, as the general public of parents but, uh, but there's no doubt about you know, your desire and that can turn you into great parents and make you really receptive to um, the needs of a child but honesty I think should be fundamental in any of that and I encourage you to be upfront about it um, and you know we are the, the silent party and it takes a long time for us to even when we discover uh, at a late age to articulate it and that's part of the process for me and that's part of the reason why I want to speak tonight and, um, and I'm sure you'll, you'll get a few more of um, unauthorised 
comments when we're not being filmed a bit later. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I really, I, that's the, the main gist of, of um, what I have to say. Um, for the sake of brevity, there's a lot more that we could say and there's a lot more details that I could go into. How are we doing for time, Kate? <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, but yeah, I just encourage you to be honest and I think the sooner, the better. I mean, I don't know. There, there are certain ages, I have children myself, and uh, they're very curious and, and they ask the questions and you find yourself in that position of feeling like you have to cover up. I, I guess you can put it in the context and say it's, it's a lie for the team, <laughs> all that sort of stuff. But, uh, but yeah, you do, you do find yourself complicit in that cycle and I just think the old adage of the truth setting you free is, a, is something that resonates. Um, so yeah, I do encourage you to be open and um, that'll do for me, I think. Thank you.